is a special feature on the show called You and Your Animal, hosted by local animal control officer, Ed Frid. Welcome, Ed. Probably some of our viewers remember uh, Garth Harbel. He was another animal control officer. Garth work with you, did he? Uh... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is he uh, is he still down there? No. Uh, got bit by a toad. He retired. <laughs> the medical uh, reasons terrible. <laughs> Boy, I you know I, I never I never would have thought a toad bite was was that serious. Can be. Can be, yeah. And Garth lost his nerve. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Once you lose your nerve in this business, you're uh, you're gone. It's over. You're dead. You're meat. You're red meat. You're dead red meat. Okay, uh, okay, Ed. So, uh, so, so, what did you bring for us today? Oh, uh, muskrat. Oh yeah. Like a beaver, but yeah. smaller. Yeah. Uh, skinnier tail. Yeah. And uh, the muskrat is uh, well, it's more rat. Yeah. You know? yeah. And. Uh, <laughs> And more musk. Yeah. <laughs> Here, I'll show you. Oh, oh and, and, and is this a good idea? Probably not. <laughs> Okay, here we go. All right, come here, little guy. Come on, come on. No, come on. No, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. I got him. I got him. I got what a muskrat looks like <laughs> and smells like and bites like. Thank you, Ed. This is a special feature of the show we call You and Your Animal, hosted by local animal control officer Ed Frid. Welcome, Ed. Fred. <laughs> Youngsters love, love these animal segments. So what did, you, what did you bring for us today? A couple of creatures. All right, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, first, uh, a snake. Wow. <laughs> hey, I'm impressed, Ed. I thought you were afraid of snakes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't let on, eh? <laughs> okay, so this is the largest snake we get in North America, okay? Oh. This is an indigo snake, and boy, have we got a big specimen. <laughs> Where do you see the size of this baby? <laughs> well, I guess I forgot to bring him. And there's a... Uh... Something, something moving under your shirt there. Hmm? Is there any chance the snake got in inside your shirt at all? Oh, oh. Oh. I don't like the way this is going. All right, sorry. No. No, you know what? You know what? We'll use a little bit of bait. Yeah. Yeah, what do they eat? Mice. Little furry or mice. Okay, I, I got a piece of cheese. I'll put that down. Right, now look, we'll, we'll get them to go down. Just stay still. Can you stand still? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> you had a snake in your shirt, Ed. Well, you know, you get busy. <laughs> you know, I can't be checking my clothes for snakes every five minutes, but but I think I might start. I got him. I got him. I got him. I got him. Oh. Oh. All right, uh, I guess, uh, I guess that's the end of that segment, isn't it? Brought a tarantula. <laughs> Welcome to Talking Animals with the local animal control officer, Ed Frid. Ed has brought us in an electric eel today. <laughs> come on, come on up here, Ed. Come on back there. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, OK. 
okay, sir? Yep. No big deal. No. So, uh, Ed, what, what do these electric eels eat, anyway? You know, electric eels are actually a species of fish. But, you know, we call them eels because... because... because they look like eels. <laughs> They're all smooth and black. They got the sharp teeth and the beady eyes, eh? They're always looking like they're up to something. <laughs> like they're planning something behind your back. Just like an eel. Okay, now, now that's good information, but I asked you uh, what they eat. You know? Oh, oh, yeah. right. Well, yeah. uh... Here's what happens. See, a little fish comes swimming by, right? Mm -hmm. And the electric eel will electrify the water all around it, just mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, it eats the little fish while it's still in shock. Oh. Yeah, these things can drop a horse. Wow. Yeah, yeah up to 600 volts come out of these babies. Small guy. <laughs> you don't want one in the bathtub with you, I guess, huh? <laughs> no, I wouldn't advise that. No. <laughs> No, 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 that's not a good idea. To, don't ever bathe with electric eels, because the teeth alone are... All right, Ed, 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 I, I was joking. Ed, it was a joke. I don't, was jo don't ever joke about electric okay, eels. Okay, all right, fine, fine. Okay, so what, what temperature do you keep the water out there for the eel? Oh, I don't know, just sort of warm, I guess. You know, just kind of like... Yeah. I'm good. Where are we? Well, no, you were just you were just telling the people about the fish that you brought in here, that's all. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, um, as you can see, uh, the full-grown dolphin loves to play with people. <laughs> Many of them have their own television programs, like you, Ed. That's, first of all, I'm not Ed, and that's not a dolphin. Oh, yes, it is. That's Flippy the dolphin. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. He loves to be petted, too. Come here, guy. No, Come no, here, no, guy. No, 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 no. All right, um... You know, Ed, 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 I think we'll have you come back another day with a new animal for us, eh? How's that? Sounds good, Flippy. <laughs> Welcome to Talking Animals with the local animal control officer, Ed Fred. What do you got for us today, Ed? Something a little tamer. Yeah. Um, a little calmer. Yeah. Because I've been having some nerve problems. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Still having trouble getting over the vampire bat segment? Yeah. Yeah, that was, um, that was a lot of bats. It was. Yeah. <laughs> um, too many, really. Yeah. I heard they infested your home. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, it's not so bad if you sleep with the lights on. So, uh, what, you, what you got in the box? Oh, I think the kids out there are really going to love this. Oh, yeah, yeah. This, this, these are really cute little guys, oh, yeah. you know? Something kind of small and fuzzy. <laughs> hey, well, that sounds great, yeah. Must be pretty small if it fits in that box, eh? <laughs> you don't have any air holes, I see. Oh, no, but don't worry, Red. There's no tarantulas here. Oh, yeah, right. There's only carpenter ants. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Anything around here that's made of wood? Well, uh, a few things, yeah. Oh, 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 okay, okay, I got him, 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 okay, 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 It's time to play the possum large word game! <laughs> Today's prizes are provided by Ellie's Electrolysis Emporium. <laughs> and uh, the winner of today's game will be awarded this coupon for a complete bikini treatment and back hair consultation. <laughs> Playing today is Mr. Ed Frid. <laughs> Mr. Frid is a low-cal animal control officer. Local. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, okay, um, 
Mr. Green, you have 30 seconds to get Mr. Fridge to say this word. Cover it up, cover, cover it up. your oh. ears. Love. <laughs> Love. <laughs> the word nice. is... Okay. okay. Uh, and go! All right, Ed, uh, people fall in this. Go quicksand. No, 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 no. Okay, all you need is... Thick gloves and a tranquilizer gun. <laughs> Okay, uh, this means never having to say you're sorry. Bumping into a deaf guy? No, 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 no. Okay, in tennis, this means nothing. Well, good manners. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, poets. Poets oh, write yeah. about this. A hermit named Dave. Mm, okay, yeah, yeah. let's go back to when you were a kid and you were acting kind of goofy and your parents said, don't worry, it's only puppy. Worms. <laughs> For you to be born, your parents had to make... Compromises. <laughs> Almost out of time, Mr. Green. Yeah. Okay. Romeo and Juliet were in... Oh, I got it! A play! <laughs> yes! I win! I love this game! There you go! There you go. is playing for this special coupon which allows them to get 50% off on all other coupons. <laughs> and Mr. Green, you have 30 seconds to get Mr. Fred to say this word. Tame. Tame. All right, Mike. Oh, okay. And go! Okay, Ed, you take something wild and you feed it and you look after it and you get to the point where you don't have to worry that's going to attack you anymore. That wild animal is now... Your teenage son. <laughs> No. When a wild animal has been trained to be with people, it's... Just waiting for its chance to attack. <laughs> well, no, no, I, I, this animal is not dangerous because it's... Dead? <laughs> okay, think about an animal. You want a word that rhymes with game. Mame! Uh, almost out of time, Mr. Green. Oh, um... And I'm talking about like a pet for a kid, eh? Like a cuddly puppy or a hamster. Oh, not a hamster. No, don't get a hamster. They're evil. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, they'll come into your room while you're sleeping and eat your eyes. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can't tame a hamster. There we go. Talking to animals, local animal control officer Ed Fred has brought us in something special today. About a gazillion bees. <laughs> come on up here, Ed. No, no, come on. It's just that I thought I saw one get out, oh. but I, I guess we're going to be okay. Yeah, yeah. Is it a good idea to have an active beehive indoors? I mean, is this safe? Oh, no, no, not really. <laughs> You should have the uh, protective wear on. Right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know, my, my safety suit's getting a little snug, right? Oh, oh. So instead, what I did was I took this insect net and I covered over the entire... Uh, the, the hive. Uh, the hive. Hive. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, well, that, you know, that's too bad because I was hoping you could stick your hand in there and grab a chunk of honeycomb, you know, and then show it to everybody, you know. Yeah, I thought you might want that. You know, they always want to see the honeycomb, yeah. and I guess it's worth it. Me getting stung to death. <laughs> I'm kidding you, Red. I'll get you honeycomb. That's why I brought this smoker. Oh. Knocks the bees right out. All right. Gonna need a little more smoke than that, aren't you? Yeah, you want me to make them mad? Is that your helpful suggestion, huh? <laughs> oh, one got out. Watch out. Go. Go. Watch. Go. There, there, there. Oh. On the table. Oh, okay, okay, here, Red, hold this. Well, I don't smoke, huh? <laughs> this is not a good time for humor, Red. Oh, all right. Okay. Wow! 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 Okay, uh, I gotta go. Welcome to Talking Animals. We're here with uh, local animal control officer Ed Fridge, brought in something. <laughs> Kind of special. Come on up, come on up here, Ed. Okay, 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 yeah, okay. Well, well, what we have here underneath this cloth is a cage. A strong cage. A really strong cage. And uh, inside the cage? 
Yeah. It's a weasel. Pardon me? What's that? A weasel. Oh, great, a weasel. Okay, well, let's have a look at him. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right, I just got to get the cloth off here. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Easy, settle down, settle down, settle down. Take it easy, take it easy, easy boy, easy, easy. Settle oh. down, settle down. I wouldn't get too close to him if I were you, Red. No, 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 he's, he's, he's fine. Come on, uh, get him out of here, will you? We don't have a look at him. Come on. Oh, well, I got some pictures of him. Would that be okay? <laughs> no, that's not okay. We want to have a look, don't we? We want to see what he looks like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think I can do this safely. I'm just gonna offer him this tasty carrot because he's probably hungry. Yeah, look, he bit right through his food dish there. Huh? Yeah. yeah, you see, there's a lot of um, jaw pressure in a weasel. Oh, yeah? And uh, <laughs> they can bite right through a steel toed boot. Wow. I know that now. Uh, you know, uh, Ed, maybe, maybe we should just, just leave him in there, okay? Well, what do you say? Are you people insisting that you, you have to see this thing? Or No, no, people, no, it's okay. Have spoken, I'm sorry. It's okay, it's okay, it's all right. Because, see, once the, the weasel gets his teeth into this carrot, yeah. his jaws will lock, see, oh, and he'll oh. hold on indefinitely. Oh, all right. Yeah, okay, yeah. here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Oh, 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 he's got me. He's got my son. Oh, God. Local animal control officer Ed Fred will be in any minute now. I think he's going to bring a bird of some kind. I'm not sure what kind. He has so many types of birds that he brings. Oh, here he is. What you... Oh, he's got a falcon. That's great. You got the falcon. That's terrific. Shh, not so loud, Red. What are you trying to do? Make it mad or something? Are you trying to scare it into a frenzy or what? Oh, sorry. I mean, it's tame. It's tame, isn't it? Well, you know, it used to be quite tame, but. It's getting a little older now. Yeah. A little bitter. Oh. <laughs> We're looking at a very violent bird here. Why didn't, why didn't you bring a different falcon? Well, I, I wanted to, yeah. but I couldn't get this one off my arm. <laughs> oh, boy, he's, he's dug right into your bare wrist there. <laughs> Shouldn't you have one of those protective gloves on? You mean like this? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I would definitely recommend that. Does that hurt at all? Very much so. Yeah. Intensely painful. You know, it's, it's not bleeding. No, no, no. But uh, I think once the talons come out of my skin, <laughs> some bandages would come in mighty handy. Maybe a few blood donors. <laughs> I'm a type A. All right, all right. Ed, why don't you just take the little hood off and then he'll just, you know, kind of fly around a little bit, eh? Yeah, are you out of your mind? No, no, I'm just thinking that, you know, if he flies away, he'll, you know, he'll, he'll let go of your arm. Or, well, maybe most of it. Oh. <laughs> but I'm not in a big hurry to test that theory. It, it is a very dangerous bird. Boy, you know, he looks pretty calm to me. Oh, that's what he wants you to think. <laughs> oh, yeah. But all the while, he's sitting there thinking up new techniques for attack and kill. That's all these birds think about is kill, kill, kill. Although you may be right. Yeah. Uh, he seems to have loosened his grip a little yeah, bit. Sure. I think he's relaxing. Maybe if we just give him a couple of more minutes. Well, how much more time do we have? Well, about two minutes. I... Oh, oh uh, boy, unless that was a mood swing. I, 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 think, yeah, I think your falcon is uh, deceased. Yeah, well. I gotta go get a bird removed. All right, let's hear it for Ed Fred. Thank you, Ed. Thank you. All right. This is the Talking Animals portion of the show with local animal control officer Ed Fred. So, Ed, uh, what have you been up to? 
Well, uh, last week I went up to the behavioral psychology department at Beardsley College. Oh, yeah, that's where they train all those rats to find their way out of the mazes there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they got a great campus, but after it was over, I, I couldn't find my way out of the building. <laughs> Luckily, I saw this rat, and he knew where he was going, so... Okay, so, uh... I just followed him. Oh, no, that was good, yeah, I figured that. What do you, what, what you got for us uh, this week? Well, today, I'm going to demonstrate animal behavior modification. Oh, boy, we could use that at the lodge, that's for sure. Yeah, what do you got, what do you got in the thing? Oh, my gosh, you got... That's a chicken you got in there. <laughs> chicken. I'm gonna hypnotize this chicken yeah. and teach her how to play a song on the piano. Wow. What song? It's my poultry and I'll fry if I want to. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, all right. <laughs> okay. Okay, Hercules. Soon you will be completely in my power. You're getting sleepy, very, very sleepy. Gosh, we're, all, we're all getting a little bit sleepy. Uh, by this, uh, point, Ed. Ed? Ed? Oh, no. Oh, no. Ed, let me get you out of here. Ed, come on. Come on. Ed, come on. Get you out of here. Come on. Ed, Ed, Ed. Here we go. Come on, I got you out of here. Come on upstairs. Come on up. Come on. Come on up. Ed. Come on. Come on. Come on, Ed. Come on. Come on. Come on. Ed. 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 Snap up. Snap up. Come on. Come on. All right. All right. All right. Whoa. Whoa. Where am I? Are you okay, Ed? Oh, yeah. That was a little weird. Yeah. <laughs> Talking animals with the local animal control officer Ed Frid. I understand Ed has brought in a very, very dangerous snake today for the show. So, uh, um, come on up here, Ed. Come on. Oh, no, come on. Come on. Oh, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Come on. Come on. Come on up here. Okay. So, uh, so what, what, what kind of snake is this? It's um, it's a cobra. A cobra. Wow, you brought in a cobra. Yeah, yeah. What was I thinking? <laughs> Okay, uh, so can we, can we have a look at it, Ed? Oh, no, no. Um, I think we better just leave it in the basket. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. That's kind of wussy, huh? <laughs> Red, this is a black-necked cobra, better known as a spitting cobra. Oh, they spit the poison? Yeah, oh, yeah. Now, how far can that cobra spit the poison? Well, farther than this. <laughs> are, we, uh, are we, are we safe here, Ed? Oh, yeah, as long as the lid stays on the basket. Oh, all right. <laughs> Ed? What? Uh, I, think the, I think the lid uh, came off the basket. Really? Uh, um, uh, what, what, uh, what are you going to do? I have no plans. Why don't you put the lid back on the basket? Why don't you put the lid back on the basket? Oh. <gasps> Oh, oh, Stay oh. still, don't move. He, he's, he, he's, he's staring right at me. Don't, shh, don't move. Oh. He's getting ready to spit. Oh, so am I. <laughs> or, 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 or did you say spit? <laughs> Take this garbage can lid and put it in front of your face. It'll shield you. Brace yourself! <laughs> I'm okay! Uh, thanks anyway for helping me with transporting the, um, the, the, the uh... The rabid uh, man-eating bobcat? No, Ed, not man-eating. He would never eat you. Well, I'll tell you one thing. We're lucky we got out of the van when we did. I told you we should have used a cage. Well, <laughs> it's not wide enough. Red, your van is not wide enough for a bobcat cage. Well, what about your tranquilizer gun? I thought that dart would have knocked him out by now. Well, it hasn't kicked in yet. 
Yeah, you wait. <laughs> He'll calm down all right. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> and then we can get back in the van and finish our trip. What? Oh, oh, oh uh, drive fast. What? We could get in the van and drive fast, and then he'll be stuck to the back of the van. No, 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 no. You're going to stand right here, OK? Like huh? that, all right? Right. I'm going to open these doors, OK? Right. I'm going to run away, all right? right? And then when the bobcat comes out to rip your face off, you nail him with another dart on your tranquilizer gun. Ready? Well, yeah, we can Ready? do that, but, 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 but the gun is empty, Red. Huh? Well, I used the last dart on that bobcat. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, this is nothing more than an air gun. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Ah. oh OK, OK, I guess there was another dart well, in there. I guess there was another dart. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, my mistake. Yeah? Yeah, half dosage. Half dosage. Yeah, I, uh, I uh, should have hit him with two darts. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'm getting a little tired here, oh, Ed. Yeah. I'm gonna take a nap. Yeah. Just for a little while. Yeah. Um, let me see, I'm about 200 pounds, so that's, uh, uh, I'll be waking up in around three or four hours. Oh. <laughs> or, oh, what? you could, uh, you could call for help. Oh, all right, yeah, all right. Hello, police? Yeah, uh, we have a situation here. <laughs> Report a stolen vehicle. <laughs> got my movies there, Ed? Oh, yeah, I got them right here. Boy, if that works, I wasted a fortune on a VCR. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you think Anne Marie's gonna notice I didn't get any movies that she wanted? Well, what movies did she ask for? Well, she asked for Steel Magnolias and Beaches. And what movies did you get? Scarface and The Terminator. <laughs> I would think when Al Pacino fires up the chainsaw, she might twig onto it. Well, you guys are going to have to help me here. Well, you could tell her that the video store was all out. It's possible. There's a lot of other women in the area, eh? Yeah, well, wh what if she phones the video store and finds that all 30 copies of both movies are still there? <laughs> she can't phone the video store. Why not? Because on your way into the house, you're going to cut the phone line. <laughs> and the cable. You cut the cable, and you walk in with the night's only entertainment right in your hand. <laughs> That's big points, buddy. Big That's points foolproof. There. That's foolproof. <laughs> um, it, it's fool something. <laughs> All right, see you guys. Yeah. Thanks for the tip. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's a dead man. Yeah, yeah, dead man with no phone or cable. <laughs> I'll bet a lot of you out there started life as children. <laughs> and I'll bet your parents read you stories like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Well, I'm here to tell you, you've grown to adulthood with an awful lot of very dangerous misinformation. <laughs> First of all, bears do not eat porridge. <laughs> not when it's hot or cold, or even if it's just right. <laughs> Well, I did once see a bear eat baked beans. <laughs> that was out of a pot on a camp stove. Then he ate the pot. <laughs> and then the stove. <laughs> but no porridge. Second, bears do not sit on chairs. Bears don't sit on anything they don't plan on eating. And just forget about those bears you've seen riding motorcycles in the circus. They're not real. No, they're just little desperate men in hairy suits. <laughs> Third, bears do not sleep in beds. In fact, when they're not hibernating, they almost never sleep. I was up a tree once looking down at a bear for 28 hours. <laughs> he never slept. <laughs> Didn't even get sleepy. No. A sleepy thing doesn't push your Jeep over and chew the tires off. <laughs> and I don't care what Goldilocks says, pretending to sleep will not get rid of bears. Neither will screaming hysterically or soiling yourself. <laughs> At least that's been my experience. <laughs> nope. The only thing that could have saved Goldilocks would have been several large park rangers with nets and tranquilizer guns. <laughs> so be careful of the fairy tale lies you tell your children. And remember, the next time you hear the call of the wild, uh, let somebody else answer it, huh? <laughs>
Just waiting on local animal control officer, Ed Frid. I guess he's running a bit behind schedule today. Sorry I'm late, Red. Oh, man. <laughs> you okay, Ed? Not really. Did you bring the, the kitten like you promised? <laughs> Had a little trouble with the kitten. Yeah, but you said you were going to bring... Things got a little out of hand, okay? Are you telling me a kitten did all this? Oh, no, no, no. There were two of them. <laughs> One distracted me, the other jumped me from behind, got my ear. Oh. It's been a pretty rough week. You've been to the hospital a few times, have you, Ed? Well, they gave me my own parking spot, yeah. <laughs> Monday morning? Yeah. Mountain lion. Oh, boy. Or might have been a snake bite. It's a little blurry. That, that usually means snake bite. Right, yeah. okay, probably. Then uh, Tuesday afternoon, I banged my knee on Stinky Peterson's porch. Yeah. He's got a bunch of skunks under there, and they're creating quite a problem. Yeah. <laughs> probably the smell is bothering them. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. <Yeah. laughs> but the hole was too small for me to get a trap under there, yeah. so I tried to lure them out and into the woods by smearing bacon fat all over my body. <laughs> That's when the bear got me. Oh. He mauled you, Ed? No, but he gave me a pretty good licking. You know, I got, I got things to do, Ed. I'm sorry. I, I can't. I, you know. no, wait, Red, wait. I, I need you to do me a favor here. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, take a look at this. Uh, <laughs> oh. I sat on a porcupine. Yeah, I, I can see that, Ed. <laughs> well, uh, how do you think it looks? really have a reference point here. Uh, you, have a, you have a before picture or anything? You see, I'm worried about infection, eh? I'm worried about people who just tuned in. Got a bit of a problem up at the lodge this week. There's some kind of a creature roaming around the woods at night, moaning and wailing, even on days when the bars are closed. <laughs> Hasn't really attacked anybody, but we're gonna catch it and just kind of move it away to somewhere where it won't get into any trouble. Kind of like what my parents did when they brought me up here. <laughs> okay, Red, we got the hole, Doug. We're all ready for the trap. All right, uh, how does this thing work exactly? Don't touch it, Red. No, I'm, not, I'm not touching it. This is very sensitive. This is a humane, large animal trap. Yeah, right. <laughs> you bury the box in the ground. Yeah, yeah. You prop the lid up. Yeah. And oh. then you hang the bait. Oh, I see. Oh, oh, and then oh, you're oh. all set. All right, good. <laughs> ah! oh. Oh. Red, I thought I told you to stay away from the trap. I made myself very clear. Yeah, no. I, uh, oh. Actually, I, 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 didn't, I didn't touch it. Red, lying is never the answer. <laughs> oh, sure it is. Grab the end there, and we'll get it out to the woods before it gets dark. All right. Okay. You know, Ed, uh, Ed, this contraption would be a lot lighter if you took the bait bag out of it. Right. Okay. Good. Yeah. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. All right. It's very sensitive. Right. Okay. Here we go. Just like it. All right. All right. What's, in, what's, what's in that bait bag, anyway? Oh, sweet stuff. Yeah? Yeah, candies, chocolates, uh, honey, peanut butter. I figured we're dealing with a bear. Oh, yeah. right? <laughs> and uh, they usually have a sweet tooth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stay back for a minute while I close the lid on the trap, OK? All right. All right. Oh, yeah! Managed to catch whatever it was we were dealing with out there. Just stay back. You have no reason to be alarmed. You're not in any danger. Yeah, all right, all right, Ed. You know we're we're all pretty calm, comparatively hey. speaking. You know. Hey, I'm the professional here, Ed. Fine. Well, then let's open up the trap and see what we got in there. Come on. Sure. Yeah, good idea. Do you want to do that now? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. I was thinking of waiting until later. No, no, no. I, I, I think we should open her up right now. <laughs> okay, sure. We can, we can do that. Uh, yeah. Did, 
Do you want to do that or shall I? Hey, you told me you were the professional, so you go ahead and do it, but I'll tell you what, I'll pinch it if you strike out, you know. <laughs> I was hoping you could tell me. Have you been living in the woods for the last few days? Well, yeah, yeah, I've been having a little trouble at home. You know, I thought maybe I could get away on my own for a few days, maybe clear my head out. <laughs> Got any more of that chocolate? You having marital problems, Dom? Yeah. You know, the ones with the soft caramel sanders were just fabulous. Are you and Anne Marie splitting up? I, 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 I don't know, Red. I'm, ju I'm just confused. I don't know what to do. And I got a toothache. Well, do you still have feelings for Anne-Marie? Yes, yes, I do. Or did you mean positive feelings? Come on now, Dalton. Quit kidding around here. You still care about her? Yeah. Probably. Well, then sure. you should just go home and tell her that right now. You know, I think I could if you'd come with me. Because if I go home by myself, I'm going to look like an idiot. Well, I don't want you looking like an idiot. Well, I took Dalton home. And I went inside. And we sat down in the living room and talked to Anne Marie. Things seemed to be going pretty well. Anne Marie invited me to stay for dinner, but then Dalton gave me one of these. <laughs> which I figured it meant she was a lousy cook. So, so I left, but he's going to drop by the lodge later and tell me how it went. Oh, Red, yeah. I just got a call from Dalton. Huh? He says that uh, he's not coming down to the lodge meeting tonight. Oh, yeah? Did he say anything about Anne-Marie? Why would she be coming down to the lodge meeting? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I mean, did he say anything about how they're getting along? Oh, no, no. Just that he and Anne-Marie were going out together for uh, dinner and a movie and that he'd be sleeping in his own house tonight. Oh, yeah. Sounds like you're losing the fight, doesn't it? <laughs> no, no, no. Well, he seemed pretty happy. Yeah. Of course, that could have just been a sugar buzz from all that candy. Yeah, well, you know what? As long as he's happy, that's the main thing. Sometimes the best way to make a marriage work is to lose once in a while, eh? Mm. You ever think about getting married, Ed? Well, yeah, uh, I'm waiting until I understand women. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I was afraid I wouldn't live that long. <laughs> There's the meeting, right? Yeah, you go ahead. I'll, I'll be right down. Okay. Right? Yeah, okay. So, uh, if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting, and, you know, I think I might be guilty of some of the same things that Dalton is, so if you need me to spend more time with you, you just, you just say the word. I mean, I'd give up everything for you. You know that. You know, my bad habits, my friends, my whole life here at the lodge, I'd give that up in a flash, you know, if it, if it was absolutely necessary. You know? <laughs> of course, you know, after that, I'd, I'd be lost and miserable and probably want to kill myself, but it's your call, honey. <laughs> The rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. Today on Talking Animals, local animal control officer Ed Frid is going to teach us all a little bit about chameleons. Come on up. Come on up, Ed. It's only a chameleon, for crying out loud. Chameleons are cold-blooded, Red. That means they're indifferent to death and killing. No, it doesn't. It just, it just means they have no tolerance for winter. They're like seniors. Red, ch chameleons have tongues longer than their whole bodies. They're total freak shows, and their eyes, they move independently, like this. <laughs> How can you trust anything like this? Huh? Stop doing that, Ed. Uh, get, get the chameleon out here. I don't think we should do that. Oh, for gosh sakes. You know, Red, don't do that. If the chameleon feels its space is being invaded, it'll shoot its tongue right up your nose. <laughs> and then it'll pull out a piece of your brain. <laughs> I don't think there's even a chameleon in here, Ed. The chameleons change colors to match their surroundings. He's colored himself to look like a chunk of wood. <laughs> the 
he doesn't actually turn into a chunk of wood. <laughs> Does he, Ed? Oh, no, I... Oh, huh? Oh, hey. Watch your nose. Oh. Well, if, if that's just wood, then where's the chameleon? <laughs> Don't make any sudden movements, Red. No. <gasps> He could be anywhere. Oh, uh, Ed, you know what? Maybe you should go home. You might have left him there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I probably did. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. That's probably where he is. Yeah. <laughs> Animals with uh, local animal control officer Ed Fritt. Ed has brought in kind of an unusual animal today, a Tasmanian devil. <laughs> come on up here. Uh, no, no, come on. It's fine. It's, it's fine. It's okay, okay, okay. Um, yes, the Tasmanian devil is an exotic kind of animal. Um, it uh, spins around wildly when disturbed, and uh, it's a cute animal, but it would just as soon rip your skull off as look at you. <laughs> No, but I understand they eat fruit, don't they, Ed? When they're in a good mood, they eat fruit, yes. <laughs> when they're in a bad mood, they eat whatever made them that way. All right, well, I got an apple here. Why don't we give them a oh, little oh, treat? Oh, huh? no, Red, uh, oh. they don't like yellow apples. Oh, 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 Jeez, he's got a pretty good arm. Oh, huh? yeah. <laughs> they're all muscle. This one's been scouted by the Blue Jays. <laughs> Well, here, let's, let's, let's give him a red eye. Maybe I'll, just, maybe I'll just toss this one in, eh? Huh? They don't like it when you throw it to them, Red. Well, he's going to fit right in with the Jays. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe you should feed him one, uh, Yeah. Ed. Oh, uh, what? Him. You feed him one. You seem to know oh. everything about him. Uh, I don't know why I wouldn't do it. Sure. Just give him an uh, apple. You give him Okay. Yeah. Here mm -hmm. I come. Yeah, here it comes. Easy. All right, Easy. He's fine. He's fine. He's fine. He's fine. Well, he seems to have settled down a little, eh? Yeah, he's fine right now. <laughs> oh, my. I hope that's apple juice. You know, today on Talking Animals, local animal control officer Ed Fred is going to teach us all about leeches. Come on, come on up here, Ed. It's safe, they're in a bucket. Yeah. Come on, although I can understand your hesitancy. I mean, these things are ugly, black, disgusting worms and they stick on you and suck your blood, right? Yeah, that's part of it, yeah. <laughs> Plus, they have 32 brains. No, yeah, I'm not kidding. Every leech has 32 little brains. <laughs> Sounds like a lodge meeting. So what do you say, folks? Do you want to see a leech or not? If you go on the internet, you can see lots of pictures of leeches there. <laughs> or visit your local bait shop. Come on, Ed, you brought in a whole bucket. Just get out one leech, that's all I'm asking, eh? Come on. All right, <laughs> all right, okay. Oh, I'm gonna try and get one out oh, here. Oh, 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 just gonna... oh, yeah. oh, oh, nope, didn't get one, sorry. Yeah, they're quick, they're very quick, yeah. Oh, I think there's one on your arm there. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, oh boy. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, and it's getting bigger. Ed. Oh, my. I think it's tapped into an artery there. Oh. Uh, at this point, you have a couple of choices. You can put salt on the leech, Red. Would you happen to have any salt in? Um, yeah, yeah, I got salt. Please? Right here. Here's some salt. Here's some oh, salt. Here's some yeah. salt. What? What? Oh, boy. You know what? I think you're just making him thirsty. Oh, yeah. Okay, no problem. Um, okay, oh, geez, I'm losing a lot of blood here. Okay, okay, um, okay. Can, can I have a cigarette? Uh, no, but I can get you a blindfold. No. no. Burning them with a lit cigarette is an effective way of getting rid of leeches. Oh, I, I, I don't smoke. Maybe we should rush you to a bingo hall. This is the up close and personal part of the show, and we've had absolutely no feedback on this segment. We find that very encouraging. <laughs> so uh, today.
today we're going to take a little closer look at the man we know as Ed Frid. So Ed, maybe you could tell us a little bit about the Frid household back in the early days before you became an animal control officer. Oh, well, uh, we had a great family. Oh, yeah. Everything was perfect. Mom, Dad, Sis, me. We had a little house and a tire swing and a little white picket fence. It was the kind of childhood that all kids want. Uh -huh. At least it was until we moved. Oh, yeah. No, no moving can be very difficult uh, for a child. What, what part of that was uh, traumatic for you? Well, it, it's hard for me to talk about right. this, Red. But my dad bought a house yeah. right next to an animal shelter. <laughs> oh, so that was really how you were introduced to animals. Oh, no, Red. There were no introductions. <laughs> no, they came over whenever they wanted to. <laughs> They'd claw their way up over the fence. They'd tunnel into our basement. They'd slither into our house through the mail slot, and they always came right for me. <laughs> My father could be asleep on the couch in his undershirt, but oh no, they'd go right past him and up to my room. Well, did you tell your parents that this was going on? Well, yes, yes I did. They said I was making the whole thing up to explain why my bed was wet. <laughs> And, and were you making it up, Ed? Not totally. <laughs> well, doesn't it seem odd to you that a guy who went through all that would end up being an animal control officer? No, no, not really. Oh. No. Um, you see, uh, I don't blame the animals. I never blamed the animals. Um, if there are any animals watching now, I never blamed you. <laughs> and please don't hurt me. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying you should have maybe been a teacher or a librarian or sell unpainted furniture or something. Well, uh, now that wouldn't solve anything, would it? Because animals can still go into schools and libraries and even unpainted furniture stores. Yeah, that's why we have to control them, not hurt them. I never said hurt them. <laughs> we have to manage them and keep them, you know, with food and, and a place to live yeah. and keep them safe. Otherwise, uh, they might end up attacking innocent people in bed. Even though their father's a way better target. <laughs> Just lying there in his undershirt, snoring and reeking of pork rinds. Yeah, okay. uh, all right, Ed. Well, uh, we're pretty much out of time here, so maybe you can just cap this off by giving a bit of advice to some of the youngsters who are watching out there. Sure. Kids, you may find that there are many things in life that are very scary, and you may be tempted to run away, but don't do it. They can run ten times faster than you. <laughs> Today's winner will receive a gift certificate for a free entree at Felicia's Fondue Palace, home of the world's only blindfolded fondue. Uh, uh, Felicia's regrets that they are not responsible for any superficial face wounds. Okay, Ed, cover your ears. Brett, you have 30 seconds to get Ed Frid here to say this word. Courage. Courage. Yeah, all right, Mr. And go! Okay, Ed, this is something that you have that gives you confidence. An electric cattle prod. <laughs> okay. No. People who do dangerous things without even thinking about the risk have this. A wild sex life. <laughs> no, okay, no. This is something you call on when you know you should get back on the horse. Oh, a gentler horse. <laughs> okay, a person who works with large, dangerous animals requires plenty of... Medical attention. <laughs> You're almost out of time, Red. I know. Okay, Ed, if you stick your head inside a lion's mouth, that takes a lot of... Breath mints. <laughs> Come on. I'm, I'm talking about bravery. Bravery kills. We don't encourage that. There we go. There we go. You know, one of the signs of a true handyman is to figure out how something works and then be able to use that same technology in an entirely new application. For example, this gate. I got a spring and I got a latch. Now I know you're thinking, how is he gonna use a spring and a latch? Or how did he get so smart? Or why does he walk like that? Well, here's your answer. This rope operates the latch, which I got attached to this end of my eaves trough. I attach the spring way down to the other end of the east trough. Now, if you're sitting there baffled, think about something you have to do every year once the leaves fall off all the trees. 
No, no, not move to Florida. I'm talking about cleaning out your eavesdrops. up at the lodge this week. The water in Possum Lake is real high and getting higher. It's going up about a, a foot a day. Mind you, the lodge never looked better with so much of our crap underwater. <laughs> hey, Mr. Green, uh, we found out what's making the lake rise. There's a big animal infestation problem, Red. <laughs> How can animal infestation make the lake go up unless they all have serious bladder problems? <laughs> no, you built a big dam across the end of the lake. That's right. Darn squirrels. It's beavers. No, the beavers have the long, narrow tails and the fangs and uh, the big hump on the back. At least they do up at the nuclear plant. You wouldn't know a beaver if it bit your butt. I did so. It's beavers, Mr. Green. They built this big dam so the water can't get out. Well, then, surely you can just go down there and take the dam apart, can't you? Well, I suppose I could if I lost my mind, Red. <laughs> Those are very dangerous animals. Oh, they don't actually bite, do they? Oh, they gnaw. <laughs> All the pain of biting, but very, very slow. Well, something's got to be done, that's for sure. Well, while they're out gathering their trees and their branches during the day, we could break in and uh, take the dam apart without them bothering us. Uh, well, they might not be in there, Mike. But they hang around. They lurk with their big teeth. <laughs> Just lurking and waiting for you to make one slip. Then they jump on you and gnaw your face off. But slowly, oh. very slowly. Come on, Ed. This is Canada's national emblem you're talking about. Yeah, right? Canadians are very proud of the beaver. Yeah. Not that proud. It's only on the nickel. <laughs> I'm guessing that any animal we've chosen to represent Canada will let us just walk in there and take its home. As long as we call it free trade. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I think we're going to be ready for the canoe race even without duct tape. The real handyman is resourceful. When the world hands you a lemon, you jam it into a canoe hole. <laughs> we got the paddles done, Red. Oh, yeah, yeah, you turned out pretty good. Yeah, we're gonna be fine. We'll probably come in second, unless there's more than two boats. <laughs> hey, guys, how's it going? Ed, well, what have you got there in your hand? Oh, turtle bite. <laughs> I forgot the little guy was in my pocket. No, I mean, the other hand, you got something that looks just like a roll of duct tape there. Oh, it's a roll of duct tape. There's all kinds of it up in the attic. What's it doing up there? We were using it to fix the heating ducts. I didn't know it was good for that. Oh, <laughs> well, there ought to be a couple more rolls up there. Stand back, guys. I'm going to open the trap door. straight home after the meeting and looks like we can get started on that house edition right away. <laughs> and for the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and the whole gang up here at Boston Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. I'm a man, and I, I can change, change if I have to, I guess. <laughs>
Keep your heads bowed, men. I want to add a little personal prayer. Let's never forget that all good things come from above. what they used to be. Actually, they never were what they used to be. Ed tries everything. No, that's not going to work. Ed. I got a better idea. There's something coming, a little treat. I know the young Walter went out to get ourselves a little uh, upgrade in the TV area with a satellite dish. Here he is. Just uh, leave her there. There. <laughs> no tie-down straps to worry about. Good. And he's got all the cable. I just mount her on uh, top one of our buildings there, pointing uh, towards the satellite. And uh, okay, so Walter's going to go up on the roof, and then we'll uh, we'll toss him up to various various parts. And he's a, well, he's an athletic young fellow, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. All right. Well, one. This is a heavy unit. Heavy unit. And up she goes. You know, I, I think we threw that actually straight up in the air, which is not really. Okay, I got a better idea. You know, the, the satellite dish has a concave shape. Maybe we can use that to our advantage. So I'm telling Ed just to put the cable down on the one side like that. Okay, come around here, come around, come around. Okay, now ready? Now we're gonna go one, two, and then give her, give her, give her, oh! There we go, oh, oh, too much, too much, oh! All right, so we went back inside, and uh, Walter, meanwhile, went and got the cable, and uh, he was hooking up the satellite dish. And uh, he let the cable go, and we didn't realize that uh, it wasn't completely uh, finished. We thought when the cable came in, that meant she was all hooked up. So all we had to do now was uh, attach her, not realizing Walter was actually still working on it. And we were hooking it up to the hydro output on the uh, on the TV there. And then, oh boy! Oh, that's, uh, oh, careful, careful. Oh, oh. Now I'm getting Walter on the TV. What the heck's that? Hey, look, Ed, it's a fishing show. Yeah. There we go. Ed Fred had called us all out to behind the lodge. He'd lost his uh, pet groundhog, and he wanted some help find, finding it. And uh, Walter was there. Walter went one way, we went the other. A lot of times they'll, they'll dig several holes. saw it. There it is. There it is. And a lot of times they dig several holes. So Walter was working into one of the groundhog holes, and. Uh, we didn't realize we were working in another one in close proximity, and uh, of course we thought we had grabbed the, the groundhog, but uh, you know, it's all uh, old. Turns out, no. Well, they gave us the slip, but a lot of times the groundhogs will stay up there up in a tree. Look at that. They sun themselves. All you gotta do is go down and get them out of the tree, and uh, everything. And this is something I didn't realize. They do apparently stay up there. I figure all we gotta do is. Uh, just take a rock and just nip them, just a, just a light, and then bring them to bud. Ed said, no, no, you can't be doing that. You're going to hurt the, his favorite groundhog. So I just chucked the rock away, which he told me to do, and uh, <laughs> thank you, Ed, for a brilliant suggestion. So Ed, uh, with the animal control uh, office he works out of, he's, of course, got all kinds of equipment, and he has a, it's a blow gun, really, is what it is, and this is what they do. They, they have to tranquilize their darts and uh, allows them to, that's just the exact, uh, dosage for a groundhog, apparently, and uh, all he had to do was just, he wanted us to catch the groundhog when it fell, and catch that in the blanket, and he just would just be able to be fine, just be able to sleep for a few minutes, and then it'd be all right. So Ed got all set there, and uh, uh, unfortunately, he inhaled. <laughs> Walter had an idea. He thought if he could actually go up the tree with the dart and the dart gun, then he could probably get a little closer to the groundhog, and uh, then he'd get a better shot at it, and that would probably work out better. And we just and then Ed, Ed and I would stay down with the blanket to catch the groundhog. So Walter goes up there and he gets himself in position, and he, he's usually a pretty good shot. But the groundhogs are cagey. You know, they'll they'll move on you if you're not careful. So he gets the dart and gets all set. He shoots, and the darn groundhog ducks. The dart hits the tree, bounces the tree. Oh, right in there! Oh. I guess, no, he's, a, well, he's young, he'll get over. So then I thought, I'll grab the branch. If I can pull the branch down, we'll just grab the groundhog there. But I didn't realize the, the branch was made a little brittle in there. And uh, Ed 
takes off and he's way outside the center line. It looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good. That's three points. Walt was crazy to try to eat that train. I had an uncle who tried to do stuff like that, but nothing that big. Oh, he'd eaten a small bicycle or two and a Buick convertible. But when Walt bit into that train, his teeth exploded like a balloon full of chiclet. <laughs> Every one of his teeth had to be filled. It broke his spirit, you know, it really did. His daredevil days were over. Yeah, maybe at a party he'd chew on a ball of aluminum foil, but that was about it. <laughs> When Walt Gorgovich was lying on his deathbed, a group of people came in and told him they had declared steam engines obsolete. He closed his eyes and he smiled, and he said what thankfully were his last words. Never bite off more than you can choo-choo. <laughs> oh, Delmore was a one-man show. Nobody'd work for him. <laughs> I remember he came to see my dad in the early 50s, looking to buy a monkey. My dad asked him what he wanted it for. Delmore said he wanted to have a monkey as his vice president. <laughs> Maybe that's where George Bush got the idea. <laughs> Delmore could never sustain his early success, but he did prove a couple of things in his lifetime. He proved that you can never go broke underestimating the self-esteem of the North American public. And if you want to make it real big, you need more than one idiot. <laughs> That last one became the mission statement of Possum Lodge. <laughs> we thank you for that, Delmore Clumstead. It's time to play the Possum Lodge word game. Our contestant today is Mr. Mike Hammer. And he's going to be playing for this plastic frog that croaks whenever you walk in front of it. <laughs> okay, let's just leave it there. All okay. Right. Now, um, um, hide, hide your ears and plug your eyes. Okay. Now, Red. Yeah. You've got 30 seconds to get Mike Hammer to say this word. Bar. <laughs> Bar. Yeah, all right, Ed. <laughs> and go. Okay, Mike. Lawyers are called to this. The gates of Hades to burn in the flames of eternal damnation? No. All right, let's say you're going into the United States and the customs officer knows you've got a record, okay? Yeah. So he won't let you in. He blanks your entry. I wouldn't let him anywhere near my entry. <laughs> okay, all right, okay, okay. Okay, Mike, Mike, when you get up in the morning, you look out your window, what's the first thing you see? Bars. Okay, no, 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 no. That's not exactly right. Okay. It's close, okay. but... Okay, okay, Mike. It's not bars, but... Gay bars? No. No, no. Gay kung fu bars? Oh, come on. <laughs> You're almost out of time, Red. Okay, Mike, when you were a kid, your mother would give you a treat. She'd give you a chocolate... Gun. <laughs> but I didn't eat it, though. I used it to rob one of the big kids. I got his candy bar. <laughs> It's time to play the Possum Lodge word game. <laughs> and what a great prize. Mike, have you ever won a trip to France? No, no, I haven't. Well, if you ever do, you'll want to take this French-English dictionary with you. <laughs> OK, Red, you have 30 seconds to get Mike Hammer to say this word, exam. Exam. Yeah, yeah, all right, Ed. Exam. All right. Okay, and go. Okay, Mike, uh, this is something you took in school. Uh, bikes, no. <laughs> Walkmans, uh, lunch money, oh, lunches themselves, oh, chalk, my... uh, uh, trophies, uh, light bulbs, no. uh, overhead projectors. Those are heavy. No, no, Mike, no. Okay, this is why you had to cram. Oh, to get everything in the backpack. <laughs> okay, Mike, this is something you had to pass to get out of school. Oh, okay. The hall monitor. <laughs> Think of a big room, lots of desks, lots of students in there. Nobody's allowed to talk. Detention. <laughs> like, this is a test, and you had to pass this test 
or you wouldn't graduate. Oh, 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 the polygraph. <laughs> You're almost out of time, Britt. I can't believe you graduated high school. How would you pass? I cheated on every exam. Here we go. It's time to play the Possum Lodge word game. Today's prize is a pocket watch for people who find that wearing a watch on your wrist is just too darn convenient. <laughs> Red, you've got 30 seconds to get local funeral director Brian Jacobs to say this word. Immortal. Immortal. Yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah. Okay, and go. All right, Brian, you know a lot about funerals and so on. What do you call it when a person never dies? Bad for business. <laughs> okay, no, no. What do Peter Pan and Dracula have in common? Oh, they suck. <laughs> okay, if a guy lives forever, he would be... Very wrinkly. <laughs> okay, okay, you know, when people get older, they start thinking about this a lot. Viagra? <laughs> Almost out of time, Red. Yeah, okay, um... Okay, Brian, what do you call someone who just keeps coming back year after year forever? Oh, Alan Thick. <laughs> no, that's not where I was going with that. He's everywhere on reruns of Growing Pains. Uh, they've immortalized there him. There you go. Red, thanks. Okay, okay, but when you're not relaxed, you're... Easy prey? No, no, okay. You know, uh, when most people get on television like this in front of a huge audience, you know, they feel very... Ed? <laughs> Ed? Ed! Oh, what? All right, all right, all right, all right, just, just, just calm down. Oh, yeah. um, what do you call it when you get a dry mouth and you break out in a cold sweat? A work day. <laughs> Uh, we're almost out of time, Mr. Green. Yeah, all right. Okay, Ed. Oh. Supposing you're up a ladder trying to get a raccoon off somebody's roof and it turns and snarls at you, okay? That makes you... Wet my pants. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. But what does it do to the guy holding the ladder? Well, it makes, makes him pretty nervous, I'll tell you. <laughs> Love something, set it free. If it comes back, call Rothschild Sewage and Septic Sucking Services. It's time to play the Possum Lodge Word Game. <laughs> Today's prize is from Billy Bob's Big and Tall Men's Shop, the biggest pair of pants in the store. <laughs> You can either wear them or use them as a tent with pockets. <laughs> Red, you have 30 seconds to get Mike to say this word. Lucky. Lucky. All right, Ed. Okay. And go! Okay, uh, Mike. Carrying a rabbit's foot means you're probably... A pretty good shot. <laughs> okay, okay. You throw money into a fountain because it's... Evidence. <laughs> Okay, okay. When you were born, your dad came to the hospital, he saw you, you were kind of cute and cuddly, and he felt very... Trapped. <laughs> no, all right then, all right then, your mom, eh? Hey? Your mom, when she saw you, she realized she was really... Bad at math. Almost out of time, Red. Yeah, um, all right, Mike. Okay, uh, uh, Mike, what, what do you call the, the richest guy in the world? A mark. <laughs> I mean, people are always hitting on you, right? I mean, the guy with nothing is the lucky one. There we go. 